Okay, hello everyone. Uh, back here, just recording another league again. Um, so going back to my list. Um, so this is the one similar to Ray Jake's list, um, but I'm running the two Sentinels Eyes, the two Suppression Fields, two Keen Sense, two Savage White, and only twenty land. Um, in the sideboard, I've got my two Graft Diggers Cage, two Torpor Orb, two Stony Silence, two Force. Obviously Lurus, uh, two Gadok Tig, and then the four Ley Line. Uh, I'm not entirely sure at the moment if... Uh, why is that selective reads list? We want my take on it. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure if uh, Ley Line should be main board or side board at the moment. I know it sounds a little bit silly considering it to be main board when I've got uh, Lurus in the deck, but I mean, a couple of big abusers of Lurus at the moment are, are both both a Jun deck or a Rock deck, and also Burn has picked it up as well. Both Burn and Prowess we've seen have been using it, so. Give us a significantly better game one against those decks, but a bit worse against most other decks. Alright, let's see. We have won the die roll here on our first game. See what sort of a hand we have. This hand looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Opponents also on Lurus. Uh, opponents mulligan to six now. <clears throat> really like to see something like a turn one Arbor Elf here and just have suppression field go super hard. Um, right. So let's uh, let's go down on our scout here. Be good to have a matchup where Suppression Field mostly wins it for us. Oh wait, what, what am I talking about? He's got Lurus. I forgot he's got Lurus. He's just sitting there thinking, yeah, this would be good against a Ponza deck, but yeah. Silly me. Silly me. Um, I still think turn 2 Suppression Field could be really good. Uh, maybe not against Burn. Against Burn, I think we want to uh, cast Auras. <clears throat> What's on top? Rancor. Okay, Rancor's pretty nice. I think we just go for the race here. Uh, seems we're on the play. We've got our Trample. Um, that'll be the last point of damage we have to take from our uh, our Auras, hopefully. Uh, next turn we can attack for 7, and the turn after that we can kill them. So if Burn can't kill us by turn 3, uh, having us uh, dealt 3 damage to ourselves, then... I think we'll be okay. Uh, probably Eidolon would be perfectly fine here. Alright, Eidolon's good here. Um, if he's attacking us for two. Oh, we got a forest out of it. That's pretty nice. Uh, we draw Rancor. Uh, so, what have we got? 3 5. We can attack for 12. We can attack for exactly lethal. He has to block. We take 4. We got a 9. And then. I think we just attack normally and then look to cast Aura's next turn if we need to. So we've now got our opponent's life total low enough that um, he has to consider blocking. And this Eidolon's going to deal a lot of damage to him if he starts casting instants and sorceries. Oh, that's a daybreak off the top too. Uh, okay. Second Eidolon? Allurus. Alright, whatever. <laughs> well, Allurus isn't going to be good enough when we just cast Daybreak Coronet here and win. Might cast the Rancor as well. Uh, we'll take an extra 2 damage from it, but we'll get that back from the Lifelink. 
And now, no matter what he does, got the trample, got the life flank, and we got the win against Burn. Um, so we would have won that without Daybreak Coronet, but um, it's definitely not a card, bad card to see. So against Burn, I like Leyline and I like Force of Vigor. I do not like Suppression Field. Um, Keen Sense is probably a little bit too cute as well, although we don't want to go too long green sources. Um, I think probably just take out the two Keen Sense, take out the two Core Spirit Dancers there. Hope it's good enough. Hope not to be like destroyed by inconsistency. Um, like we were the last leg, that sort of stank a little bit. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Alright, let's see how our starting hand looks. Oh yeah, so just about this uh, leg as well. Um, uh, we're mulliganing this hand. Sorry I didn't post a video yesterday. Um, I sort of ran out of time to record in advance and I spent uh, yesterday and today with my girlfriend. Um, so, yep, yeah, that's what happened there. Um, I think we... This is sort of tempting to keep. Bottom one boggle, top deck a land and go off, but I think we... It's just being greedy. Um, okay, so that's what, like... Two no landers in a row. Yikes. Yikes. Alright, what have we got now? Keep. Uh, so bottom, bottom, bottom. And yeah, hope to draw a land source. This is a pretty good four. Um, yeah, so I spent some time with my girlfriend on the weekend, obviously, and didn't get a chance to record a video for yesterday. And this one's sort of going up late today. For the same reason, because I spent time again with her today. Uh, okay, so we get land off of our first Goblin Guide trigger, which is pretty good. Means we can play double aura next turn, uh, which I am pretty, a pretty big fan of. Opponent has got the green here on Stomping Ground. Um, also, uh, going forth into next week, it's Wild Macaddle. It's more of a zoo. Um... Going forward into next week, I'm probably just going to do the one game a day during the weekday instead of a one one league a day uh, like I did last week. Really made it hard for me to get a few videos ahead, um, and and like actually have the weekend to spend, uh, you know, with with my with my girlfriend and all of that. So, um, yeah, probably just do that record a full league at some point during the week and then go back to business as usual with a slightly delayed um, broadcast for you guys. Alright, so at the moment, looks like Zoo has got three creatures, three cards in hand and have, they haven't done too much else. We've got a pretty healthy life total at 15 because we've had two Razor Verge thickets. Now the Goblin Guard comes down. Uh, hopefully he taps another mana here. Lightning Bolt? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine saying that. Um, so now we're only in trouble to Nature's Claim. Second Lightning Bolt. Okay, I don't think he has lethal here. Be pretty surprised if he did. Uh, 10? Oh, wow, he does. Okay, well done. Well done. Okay, he got there on that one. And I'm giving him a bit of free information with those guide triggers there. I probably... Uh, yeah, I shouldn't, shouldn't have done that and should have just conceded when I did basic, basic math. Um, but that's not how it played out. Alright, so... We did still see Lightning Bolt. Hmm. Just curious if I want to bring these Keen Sense in over the Core Spirit Nancer. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Let's go with it. I don't want to lose to Eidolon. And she's so bad to a Lightning Bolt, like... Uh, okay, we'll keep this one. This looks really good. Uh, with this hand, we have to be on the attack, but we also do have Vigilance, so... 
It's going to be pretty nice. Uh, so long as they don't destroy our first strike with a Nature's Claim or Destructive Revelry. Or a Natural State would probably be more common. Opponent's Mulligan down to 5 here. Um, it's a bit unfortunate for them, of course. Uh, probably, you know, increases our chances a decent amount, but it's still a very losable game. Um, two damage to ourselves from Temple Garden, but we're not slow rolling the boggle. That's never going to happen. N not when we saw Eidolon game one as well. <clears throat> Alright, here comes Goblin Guide. Hopefully we can get some more free land. Alright, uh, another Sentinel's Eyes on the top of our library, revealed just now. So we're going to go ahead, Ethereal Armor, Sentinel's Eyes, attack. <clears throat> and if we wait a turn on blocking here, um, we'll see what he does, if he fetches out his green mana or not. He does fetch out his green mana. If he plays something pre-combat, we can look to block. If he doesn't... Alright, he plays Wild and Cattle pre-combat, and Swift Spear. Uh, so he's showing a lot of weakness here. Um, he would have attacked if he had uh, some some description of uh, enchantment destruction there. And getting the second source of first strike, like... Okay, we attack for exactly lethal on turn 3. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so game one against a zoo deck. Alright, and I guess it can go next to Mono Red Prowess. Zoo Burn. Alright, so. 13th win there. Here's my friend the calculator. And uh, that puts us to 62%. And 1 0 in the league. Alright. Thing pen. Oh. Big pen. <laughs> Alright, I'll go ahead and keep this. Opponent's also an Allura stack. Uh, this will be bad if they have both, um, like, Thought Seize and Fatal Push or something, but other than that, hopefully we'll be okay. Um, it's, yeah. If, if he's just got two removal spells, we'll be good, but. Turn 1 Disruption plus turn 2 Removal Spell would be pretty savage here. <laughs> Alright, so opponent used his Misha's Bubble uh, targeting himself. He has shown... Let's just play this out. If he's got the bolt or fatal push, it dies to it. I'm thinking this could be a death shadow deck at the moment. Yeah, considering he's done nothing there, I'm smelling a death shadow pretty badly here. Oh, maybe it's just Jund. Okay. Green, red, Tarmogoyf. Okay, we can beat a Tarmogoyf. Absolutely, we can beat a Tarmogoyf. Hopefully we see land in these uh, two cards we get to draw. Alright, uh, that is not land yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe rankle. Alright, internet was having a bit of a freak out there. Alright, so we don't see land yet, but we do get to attack for 7 here. And we do have Totem Armor Protection on the Core Spirit Dancer. 
A uh, large amount of our opponent's removal is Assassin Trophy too, so that will give us mana if they cast that on core. You know, worst case scenario, it ramps us into our next core or ramps us into our Lurus as well. So, not hugely upset there. Death Shadow. So, they do have the Death Shadow. Um, so, we've got to make sure we do this right uh, with when we declare blockers. Oh, wow. Double Ethereal Armor here. That's so good. Definitely a big fan of drawing that second instance. We could just uh, deal lethal here before our opponent gets to uh, do anything. <laughs> the safer line is to uh, deal as much damage as possible to the Death Shadow. We'll do a little bit of math. We'll assume he's got one destruction spell. Um, okay. So if he's got like the Abrupt Decay, he uses it on an Ethereal Armor, he could shrink our Core Spirit Dancer low enough that he doesn't die, the Death Shadow lives, and and then we get hit on like Swing Back. Um, so we don't actually have any Path to Exiles here, which is pretty awkward. Um, not sure how impactful drawing cards will be when... The opponent just makes a giant creature. Maybe it's good because it doesn't ramp their Death Shadow's power. I think we want some sort of removal like the Savage Swipe here. And Core's probably the weak one. Griff Spoon's really good against Death Shadow. Uh, I want to keep as many of those as possible. <clears throat> So yeah, bringing in the Ley Lines there invalidates our Lurus. I've been having a thought for a while of... Alright, well, we'll keep this. And if he doesn't have that... Uh, doesn't have thought seeds, we're golden. Absolutely golden. Um, but yeah, having a bit of a thought recently of whether or not it's worthwhile um, keeping Ley Line in on the draw. Oh, sorry, when you're on the play. Uh, against these decks post board. I don't think it is. Alright, so looks like our opponents uh, targeted us with the Misha's Bobble and they're going to get the Thought Seas here. So they're going to have perfect information um, on what to take. If there's another Boggle on top, he won't take that. He'd probably take the Griff Spoon instead. Alright, so it looks like we're going to try for a dried arbor here um, but our opponent's smart here he's going to hold off on that bobble until after we've cracked our fetch land uh, because now we're just going to shuffle that card away and they're not going to have that information so looks like it could be a tarmogoyth here and potentially death shadow next turn I'd really like to see a Hyena Umbra um, quite soon. Opponent does not have access to red mana yet, and they chose... Uh, well, let's get our creature. Um, they chose to fetch for the Overgrown Tomb. That was the second land they played. So it seems a little bit bizarre to me. I'm just going to play out the Grisburn here, uh, if my computer will let me, or my internet will let me. Um, <laughs> my internet's being quite weird today. Um, <laughs> not, not very happy about it. Alright, so it looks like he has got the destroy effect here. Hopefully we top deck creature, otherwise we're not going to be doing a huge amount. Dismember. That is so aggressive. Holy cow. He took 5 damage then. And he's going to have some big death shadows that we're going to have to deal with. Um, really going to have to try and draw a scout here to come back into this. Hope that he does not have um, team of battle rage as well. So yeah, the fact that he searched double green was probably a sign that he had the third land as well. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh -uh. 
Alright, so this is going to be a little bit rough, and we'll have to hope for a good game 3. They could be well, well be taking the Grispoon here. I think the automatic take would be Daybreak Coronet, if he wasn't thinking. He's taking Ethereal Armor. I mean, he's dead to Rancor, like... Far right, <laughs> that's annoying. He's dead to um, me playing Scout there, putting ra like Grispoon, Rancor, Attack, or Grispoon, Daybreak, Attack. Um, as it is, uh, we'll just play out the Horizon Canopy. End of his turn, we will cycle our Horizon Canopy. Although, uh, we're on a two turn clock here, and I'm, I'm not sure how much we can do when we're taking a life to do this. And, you know, another three life next turn to play Creature Plus Aura. Ah, uh, wow. He's got the Become Immense as well. Interesting. Interesting. Well, he's uh, giving us a lot of free information here. And the Team of Battle Rage. Yikes. Um, so, yep. Yeah, not winning that one. Uh, not off the back of that rough Thought Seize. Uh, and they had the d Destroy spell to back it up as well, which is unfortunate. So we'll keep, uh, put our Core Spirit Dancers and our Keen Sense back in now. Um, and yeah, just go on that. Maybe I could have uh, removed Suppression Field before, particularly on the draw, instead of the Core Spirit Dancers, and that would have given us a better chance to draw a creature after we got Thought Seize like that. Alright, so no creature here. Uh, we could go Dried Arbor and then go Totem Armor plus Flying, but the problem with that is if he Thought Seizes, takes the Totem Armor away, one kill spell, and we're out of the game. So this looks about the same. Uh, I'm going to keep it. Bottom of the forest. I uh, use Windswept Teeth to get Dried Arbor. Um, so bad against kill spell, like thought sees into kill spell. Maybe I want to slow roll the dried arbor here. Sucks when you're. Oh wow, he's not got it. Okay. So the obvious target here is going to be the Core Spirit Dancer. Um, okay, Savage Swipe, not terrible. Not great against the Death Shadow, but if we play it early enough, like it looks like we'll be able to, then it's not going to be too bad. Um, so we're going to face a kill spell here of some description. Probably another Dismember. No, Lightning Bolt? Okay. So hopefully Dried Arbor lives and we can go in on Dried Arbor. Seen the top card of our library now. See what he decides to do. Super frustrating not having a good boggle hand. I don't think. Um, wow, Renin Six. That is so, so savage. What a beating. Alright, so Lurus is a new game plan if we can draw to it. Uh, drawing one land will get us there, but. We do need to draw that. Opponent's com like performing completely differently. He's performing like Jun now, where he was performing like Death Shadow in game games one and two. This is like completely different. Here comes a Swift Spear though. Uh, I don't really care about Swift Spear too much. It's it's looking like he's got the answer for Lurus. It doesn't matter because. Yep, they're getting free value on their Wooded Foothills here. Well, they returned Bloodstained Maya and then played a Wooded Foothills, so... That's a little bit of a uh, inkling that they might be mana-flooded a little bit there. 
If uh, we can stick Lurus, we'll be in a good spot, but I doubt that we will. I doubt they'd be using um, that destroyer fact. The oh wait, no, they'd use Renin Six on Dried Arbor because it's just free, and they'd use Lightning Bolt on Core Spirit Dancer because they have to. Um, all right, we do get the Boggle. Pretty happy about that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and Keen Sense here. And I'm just going to attack my opponent, get that card draw. I'm not too concerned about the Renin 6 here. More concerned about attacking my opponent. Um, oh wait, I can't attack yet anyway. Um, <laughs> never mind. Jump in the gun, jump in the gun. We do have a chance here to also play the uh, Savage Swipe as well. Like Sentinel's Eyes into Savage Swipe. But that could easily be disrupted if he's got an Assassin's Trophy, and then we lose our creature. So you got to become immense? No, he doesn't have the mana for that, because that's 7 mana total, including the Dell. Mutagenic Growth, okay. But instead of paying the life, he's paying the mana. Which means he probably doesn't have Death Shadow in hand, or he's trying to psych me here. Alright, well let's go ahead and get our Sentinel's Eyes and our Grispoon out there. Next turn we can look to cast Daybreak Coronet. And I'm not too concerned about this Ronin 6. It's a pretty big waste of time at the moment if you ask me. Alright, so opponent's got uh, three different auras which are going to be troublesome for him here. I wouldn't be surprised if Keen Sense bit the dust though. Uh, that would make way for our Daybreak Coronet to be really, really strong, though. Um, like, have have a much better chance of resolving. Wow, he's taken away the Sentinel's Eyes there, which we can just recast. He might have a Scavenging Ooze or something. <clears throat> and he's given us that free card draw, too. Um, always yes, always yield. Yeah. Alright, so we draw another Scout there. Uh, Bit of a waste of time, not really what we want to say. Now, opponent continues to play lands and do not very much with it. Um, pretty soon he's going to be able to cast Lurus and reoccur Misha's Bobbles, but I'm not really too concerned about that. <clears throat> It's going to be hard to find a good time to cast Savage Swipe into my opponent's open mana as well. Um, Alright, he's got a pretty big grave. If he casts Become Immense here, we could just be dead or one point off dead. That would That's quite scary. Become Immense is 6-6. Six, six. So now he's got another Mutagenic Growth. He's paying life for this one, which is interesting. Team of Battle Rage, attack for 16. Lightning Bolt, me. Alright, he's got it to a 9-9. Nine, nine. Then he can recast Lurus and go for the win. Uh, did our opponent just punt? Has he got another Bolt in hand? Okay. Uh, he had Ren in 6 ability. Um, so, we didn't uh, didn't get there. Little, little bit unlucky, um, I'd like to say. Uh, so thirteen uh, divided by twenty two. So 59%. And I'm gonna just say that was a Jun deck because it was pretty Jun esque, right? Um, it may, may have had Death Shadow in there, but other than, like, the only card we didn't see were, like, Scoos and Croxa. Um, so I'm pretty sure that was just a Jun deck. 
Alright, so opponent's on Yorian here. He's going to have an 80 card deck. Uh, this is looking like a pretty good mulligan here. I'm going to go ahead and keep this. Uh, we'll get rid of the Griff Spoon there. Uh, duplicate Griff Spoon is pretty po pointless. Um, and here, I'm hopefully going to go off the uh, Suppression Field, uh, locking my opponent off mana. That'd be really nice. Uh, hopefully no spell snare. Spell snare would uh, counteract my plan quite nicely. And you know, but against these decks, a lot of the time they're playing you know ice fan coddles. It's going to be hard for me to attack into it with a grispoon and sentinels. I had no first strike. Uh, if he has enough snow permanence, he'll have the death touch too. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and. Cast this suppression field here. Wow, it resolves. Our opponent must have uh, just skipped through to my end step or something. And it's allowed my suppression field to resolve before he could crack the Misha's bubble. That's uh, really good for us. That is really, really good for us. It basically makes this thing null and void for the first few turns. And he's playing with uh, card disadvantage now. <clears throat> Or tempo disadvantage, I should say. Explosives on one. Yikes. Well, that's going to cost four mana for him to activate, and by that time, we're going to be able to cast Lurus as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jam these returnable auras here, right? Alright, so get a nice attack in here. Prismatic Vista, so that's going to cost mana for him to uh, fetch. Of course, he's going to have to tap those two lands, but he could play to a turn three engineered explosives here. Sorry, turn four engineered explosives and not do anything before that. Um, yeah, so he's just paying to crack that now. I mean, sure. Has he got something to do with the one mana there? Like a Serum Visions or something? Otherwise, it doesn't make much point, uh, much sense doing it during his turn. It shows that he's got little interaction. Um, all right, Razor Verge Thicket will come in tapped. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and attack here for four, and then cast Lurus second turn. Uh, second main, pardon me. Oh, Metallic Rebuke. Yeah, that's dirty. Okay, okay. Yikes, I should have seen that. Because, you know, artifacts. This card's pretty powerful. Like, I'd almost say it's too powerful with the fact that people are running around with Urza and that. This is probably an Urza deck. Um, because my opponent is um, running the Engineer Explosive. Yep, here comes Emery. Yikes, that is a lot of uh, scary stuff. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead, we'll cast, wait, we can pay for Metallic Rebuke, so we'll cast the Ethereal Armor first. Uh, that could just give us the win. If we resolve this Grispoon here, we have got the win. If not, we put him to one, that's pretty close. Alright, so this is an Urza deck, and it's also got, um, the Ice Fan Cottles in it, right? Alright, so we're gonna want... Some Torpor Orbs, some Graft Digger's Cage, Stony Silence too. Those Engineered Explosives. I still really rate Suppression Field. Uh, Keen Sense, probably not the strongest here. Neither is Grispoon. And maybe one core out. Savage Swipe's not too bad. Do we want Gadok Teague? He's probably got some number of cryptic commands. And he's got Mystic Sanctuaries, so he'll have that lock going on. Um, yeah, maybe another one of them out. We might just trim a Coronet. Or trim both Savage Swipe and ignore my opponent's creatures. I kind of like Savage Swipe because it gives us an answer to 
both Emery and Urza. Maybe I just take out all the Grist Spoon, uh, leaving that extra Core Spirit Dancer. Maybe a little Aura Light here though. Um, 14 one mana auras is not very many. There's a lot of hate cards here that I want, is the issue. Um, uh, we get rid of Keen Sense for a one of Grisburn. Means we can attack over the artifact token that they get from Urza, right? Metallic Rebuke is irritating as all flippin' heck. It gets past our Stony Silence. Alright, well, we don't have green mana here, so we're gonna have to throw this one back. Right, so, opponent began with seven cards. We'll keep this one. Really, not too bad. I'm going to get rid of one scout, um, keep the double Teague just in case one gets removed, right? These decks like to run around, run around with like Galvanic Blast as well. Abundant Growth, yeah. Nice mana fixing for our opponent. Alright, so throw away a Buggle, get one off the top. Not what we want to see. Could also uh, just get hit really hard with a Blood Moon here too. Wouldn't be a fan of that. Uh, not too much I can do about it though. Um, <laughs> They've fetched their, their turn like they want to cast something. Alright, so I think I just attack into Ice Fan Coddle here and let the trade happen. Even a Snapcaster Mage here. Like, we've got a creature heavy hand. Um, our important ones are Core Spirit Dancer and Gadok Tig. Wow, he's just let that happen? Okay. Well, let's let's try for a Gadok Teague here. Uh, so, like, Mana Leak would be my uh, assumption here. I'm getting rid of Gadok Teague because we have duplicates there. He might have a burn spell for it. Okay. Seems bizarre. Maybe Teferi. <laughs> Maybe he Tef bounces it. Then we can kill Tef, though. Alright, just an Uro. Uro is not all that scary. Uh, so ideal draw here would be land, so I can go Core Spirit Dancer plus Ethereal Armor. I'll put the Ethereal Armor on the Boggle. And attack for two. Alright, so we get, an, uh, we get our ideal... Um, ideal draw there. Torpor Orb, that's going to be a really good one. Okay, cool. So, it should be noted that with Uro, uh, Torpor Orb will stop the draw uh, and the life gain, but it will still be a 6-6 six -six that's on the battlefield, um, which isn't very good. <laughs> but it'll stop one draw and life gain if he looks to do that on his next turn, or when he does look to do that. He does have to escape 5, and he's only got 3 cards in there currently. Can add a fourth, and then you'd need to cycle something. Gadok Teague's also going to stop him from casting four mana non Urza spells here. Uh, but yeah, it could just be Galv Blast. Could be Blood Moon, something like that. That'd really suck. Thopter Foundry. Yikes. Uh, so you got uh, 
Sword of the Meek here as well. We'll have Torporob will be really good against that combo. <clears throat> Emery, okay. Engineered Explosives. You had to dog us like that, didn't you, opponent? Alright, so let's go in on this Core Spirit Dancer a little bit here. Actually, no, you can't cast the Engineered Explosives because of Gadok Teague. That's really good for us. Um... So we'll just attack with all three creatures here. Torporob, second main. Looks like my internet's being a little slow and wacky again. So no good blocks for our opponent here. He takes 8 damage, puts him down to half of his life total. And then, um, okay, he blocks with the Emery. Uh, that doesn't seem particularly good for our opponent. So he takes 5 instead of 8. And now we can go ahead and cast our Torpor Orb. And this will shut off our opponent's uh, Thopter Sword combo. So that is nice. Shut off things like their Urza, giving a token. Feeling like we're in a pretty good spot here. Uh, looks like we're facing down an Uro though. Yeah, so Uro comes out. He doesn't get any life or a card draw from it yet, but he will still get it when he attacks. Ho hope I um, see an aura here. I don't see it yet. We'll cycle this Horizon Canopy, see what we draw. Another Scout's not really what we're looking for. Um, probably just look to cast another Core Spirit Dancer and go off next turn. The other one we could have done then is attack with Slippery Boggle, let it die, and then lure us, recast the Ethereal Armor onto our Core Spirit Dancer. Um, that might have been the better line. But also, I like attacking, so you know. <laughs> if our opponent attacks for 6 here, he's taking, you know, 6-8 back. Probably safer not to attack with the Gadok Teague though. Um, so no need to block here, but we can use these Glade Cover Scouts and Slippery Boggles next turn to block too. Goblin Engineer. Gotcha. And there comes the Tormod's Crypt, so Lurus is going to be not that good anymore. Um, my guess is they drew that that turn because they would have played it earlier if they uh, had it earlier, right? Alright, so I think we go ahead and... I'm going to cycle this Horizon Canopy here. Uh, Razor Verge Thicket is really not what we're looking for. Our top of our deck is not being kind to us at all. I'm going to get rid of the Goblin Engineer here. I uh, would Savage Swipe, then we get a big attack. And post, main, uh, post combat, I can play a scout to chump with. Oh man, he's got the metallic rebuke, you dog. Um, my opponent still could have uh, Baitful Strict, Ice Chain Coddle, sorry, or uh, Snapcaster Mage. I'm gonna hold the Gadok Teague back. <clears throat> Our opponent hasn't got many good artifacts to return uh, from the graveyard to the battlefield, though. The best of which would be Tormod's Crypt, really. It's a pretty close game. Um, we did go really aura light when we sideboarded. Um, so, it's probably our own fault that we are so uh, aura light at the moment. But, I mean, we got creatures that do stuff right. It's not the worst thing ever. We're still netting 3 damage a turn to our opponent. 
Hopefully this turn will be the turn where we finally draw an aura. Uh, and then we get two draw triggers off course Spirit Dancer. Should just be the win if that happens. Alright, so we'll just put Scout on down. Three cards in hand for our opponent. They didn't uh, play like an Ice Fang Coddle at the end of last turn, so I don't think they'll have it unless they draw it in uh, either their draw step or the Euro draw. Euro draw. Have you pronounced his silly name? <coughs> Although, yeah, of course, they don't get the card draw from it, so maybe they're disinclined to play it. Ethergust, yikes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put Teague on the bottom. Uh, a little bit scared of a Cryptic Command now, if I'm being entirely honest. A little bit scared of one. Explosives on one. That's not the scariest thing. Returning Aethergust. That's an interesting one because we bottomed the Gadok Teague. And then he's looking to what? Return Rancor? Rancor specifically? Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and cast this Ethereal Armor, oh, sorry, Hyena Umbra on the Core Spirit Dancer. Get our draws happening before anything wacky can happen. Uh, always yes. Bam. Alright, Daybreak Coronet. Um, could just be worth cycling now to see two more auras. Our life total is getting low, but this will force our opponent to pop this engine in explosives this turn. And then hopefully we see enough auras so that we can actually combo off next turn. Holy crap! I feel like I'm so unlucky right now. Holy crap. We still had 20 in our deck, and we've seen 4 auras in 20 cards. Uh, here my opponent can recast Engineered Explosives from his Graveyard too. That's extremely frustrating. That lock might actually just kill us, because then he can attack and win. Uh, if he pop pre-combat pops the Engineered Explosives, though, uh, we can block with a Core Spirit Dancer, try to go off with the other Core Spirit Dancer. He's... Oh, wow. Wow. He's going to give us an opening to recast auras from our graveyard next turn. That's pretty interesting. Has he got the Galvanic Blast? Explosives on two. Well, that is going to be game. Damn. Uh, I thought we had a chance there. Pop explosives. Gotcha. That's enough for me. Don't need to see anything else. Um, okay, so we, maybe we sideboarded a little too greedily. Um... Maybe these Torpor Orbs are just a little too much. We've still got Suppression Field and Stony Silence for all that stuff. And Graft Dog Digger's Cage. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Put in the extra Core Spirit Dancer. Maybe not. Maybe the extra Grisbone. I don't want to be Aura Light again. Maybe I want to remove the Savage Swipe as well. That was 
pretty poor. Maybe I'll leave in both core spirit dancers and remove the savage swipe. It's probably better. Well, uh, this hand's garbage. This hand is not garbage. We will keep this hand. Um, get rid of Savage Swipe. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an interactive piece with our opponent uh, once we get rid of Savage Swipe. But... Pretty risky. Getting rid of the Core Spirit Dancer. I think I want to keep the Core Spirit Dancer. Opponent also mulligan to six cards. We'll see if he goes down any lower. His mulligan to five. Wow. Well, we could just potentially run away with this game with Core Spirit Dancer here. Five five card hand, like beggars can't be choosers with that. <clears throat> if he's got the explosives, uh, our rancor is going to return to from the graveyard to the battlefield. So I'm really happy about that. As far as an aura to have, it's pretty strong against an explosives deck. Alright, great. So no turn 1 artifact, which means we don't have to worry about a turn 2 metallic rebuke from our opponent. Gonna go ahead and cast the core spirit dancer here. Attack for 1. Next turn, Rancor plus Daybreak and we get some draws. <clears throat> really excited about our next turn. We get to untap with Core Spirit Dancer, that's amazing. If he's got a Galvanic Blast, it's a bit frustrating, but we'll still do okay. Alright, he's got that exactly the Galvanic Blast there, that's pretty annoying. We can get a back later with Lurus though. Wow, he's bricked on land! Okay, that's really good. Get our auras out there. No blue mana for these counter spells. Maybe force of negation, but not nah, no force of negation. All right, let's smack him in the face. If I knew that he was um, keeping a one lander there, yikes! All right, explosives on one. He's gonna have to draw a land to actually activate it though. Uh, let's go ahead and cast Lurus. I hate it how it does that. Can you just keep it stationary, you stupid moto? Holy crap. I don't need it bouncing around when it's in an active area and when I can cast something. Alright, so we win. My opponent, a um, little bit land screwed there. Uh, always hurts to lose like that. Um, but you know, we, we lost like that uh, last leg quite a bit, right? So we got up to a rounded 61% here And that was a uh, bank control deck, so nice little win there yeah, As you see with these um, Yuri decks, like they can be great decks and really scary, but are they consistent enough with the AD cards? Um, I know Jacob uh, Kamensky, who I follow, he was saying that uh, for something like Splinter Twin, where they run a lot of three elves, it's perfect because they just put four of each card in um, and they have the exact same drawing average averages um, just over a larger deck. So, I mean, it's if, if you've got a situation like that where you're running three elves or two elves and um, you can keep the uh, yeah percentage compositions of your deck the same, then it seems pretty good. A free ca creature that blinks stuff. Can't be the worst thing in the world. <clears throat> Alright, so we have found our round 4 opponent here. I 
Nadif. Alright, I'll keep this hand. The upside is like really high. Opponent hasn't revealed a companion. Oh, okay. I thought we were on the play. Never mind. Um, snake. Oh, this is going to be spicy. Oh, uh, maybe it's just Amulet Titan. And he's got a bounce land, so he was getting, like, real tricky and trying to, like, just just do a flash play sort of thing. Alright, computer... My computer seems to be freezing in, or my internet, or whatever's going on. Um, in the box there, it read that it was my opponent's turn... Uh, okay, no, he's just waiting until his second main to do what he's doing. Cast and explore, okay. Field of the Dead, so yep. We're on the money with the fact that it's Amulet Titan. If we get to go in on Core Spirit Dance, so we're going to be pretty happy. Um, well, if it doesn't die to a uh, Valakult trigger. Uh, we do draw the Scout. I still want to get the Spirit Dancer out there. <clears throat> the gamble is worth it, in my opinion. Yikes, Vesuva. Probably top copies our Temple Garden. Copies Cavern of Souls. I guess this one's naming Dryad. Okay, so they have got the Dryad of Lysian Grove here. Um, they're very light. They've got a lot of colorless mana sources, though. I think they had to name Snake on the Tribe Scout. And then they drew the Crumbling Visage, or they would have played that the first turn. Alright, no extra lands from our opponent here, so I'm pretty happy about where we're sitting. Uh, we'll just cast all our auras. Uh, drawing Grisburn is fantastic too, really good card in the matchup. If our opponent wants to destroy our Core Spirit Dancer, they're going to have to do it through double Totem Armor as well. <laughs> we got all the land in the world. Uh, but, you know, a 9-10 Core Spirit Dancer is not bad. Opponent's going to have a lot of trouble dealing with that or dealing us lethal. Could be facing down a... Uh, okay. I was going to say a Primeval Titan, but not just yet. Relic of Progenitors. Not going to do that much here. Um, and it exiles his own graveyard. There comes the Talaria West. Uh, an attack for four. Okay, so pre-combat we want to cycle this Horizon Canopy, see if we draw an Aura and deal lethal, we do. Okay. Alright, so we get in for lethal there, really nice. Uh, so Amulet Titan, we want our removal, we want our Force of Vigors because that counts as a removal for the Dryad of Lysian Grove. Uh, we've already got our... Uh, Savage Wipes in the main deck. Suppression Field here I think is going to be a little bit weak. And I think other than that we're pretty good uh, with what cards we're keeping here. <clears throat> Just two Suppression Field out and two Force of Vigor and real simple sideboard. Four kill spells for his... Uh, Dried of Lysian Grove. <laughs> if we're on the play with a um, Savage Swipe in hand as well, it could be right to turn one kill the snake so he doesn't. Just get to unload free lands and you reduce his tempo like that because normally they'll just keep a hand that has either the snake the reach guy with the etb or an amulet so i mean seems reasonable to me 
Uh, I'm no expert on the deck, but... Alright, so no green mana here, which is sad. Uh, yeah, keep this uh, really exciting hand here. I want to keep my land so that I can use my Luris if I need to. Alright, I don't want to keep my land anymore. Go away, land. I'm going to have nightmares of land after this game. Alright, so quite a slow t uh, start from my opponent. Uh, my guess would be that they are going to have the uh, turn 3 Dryad of Elysian Grove though. We might actually get to hard cast this Force of Vigor um, and disrupt our opponent that way. I am going to uh, draw step my opponent's amulet and dryad here with the force of vigor and throwing away the rancor. I don't care. This will disrupt their tempo so much. We've already seen that they've got a slow hand and taking away two ramp sources like that, they're probably going to be dead in the water or at least it'll give us enough, enough time to draw back into it. Alright, here comes prime time. <laughs> well, good news is we're not dying to a Valor Cult just yet. Um, bad news is this guy is big and scary. <laughs> I might want to reset my Hyena Umbra onto my Lurus. So I'll attack for two, hope he blocks, and then put the Hyena Umbra on Lurus. Or, oh, yikes. That's going to make for a good next turn. See if my opponent takes the bait. No blocks. Well, that's sad. I think I'm going to cast Lurus anyway. I don't think playing scared with Lurus is going to be good there. If he had the Dryad, he probably would have played it again last turn. Instead, he just jammed the Primeval Titan. But if he has Dryad of Lucian Grove here, and then attacks with Primeval Titan, Lurus dies for free, and we're in a lot of trouble. Uh, plus, he's got the amulet now, so he's going to be able to give his Primeval Titan double strike, potentially. <clears throat> Maybe he gets Talaria West, transmutes for Summoner's Pact, and then uh, uses that Summoner's Pact to get his Dryad for next turn. Well, there's the Talaria West, and something's telling me he, he's going to do exactly what we said he was going to do. He doesn't have access to double blue yet, though. So, no blocks from us. Really hope to draw some description of Aura here. Ah, Vesuva, Copy Simic Growth Chamber. Copy... yeah, okay. I thought he copied Field of the Dead for a second. I'm like, that can't be right. Hang on. No way. No way. <clears throat> Alright, looks like he's getting that Talaria West transmuted now. Um, he's got a land in hand, so he can just play his... Um, his Dryad of Elysian Grove, burn our Lurus, get another token... So Lurus didn't live long there. Uh, this is probably going to copy Field of the Dead. I can't believe it copied Valakult. Maybe, maybe not. 
I don't know. Alright, well, Grisburn would be our best friend here, and hope that he only has one copy of Talaria West or something funky like that. This... Oh, far out. Bugger off. Stick of your cards, opponent. Grisburn would still probably win it for us, though. Maybe. Maybe not. Now, they've got so much damage on board at the moment. Alright, well, that's, uh, that didn't get there. Alright, so post board, I don't think we want to change really anything. I'm just going to keep it as it is. <clears throat> Maybe you can take Keen Sense out, but that's also good for drawing on your first attack or two. And Force of Vigor. Like, it's a good card to pitch to Force of Vigor at the same time. And it draws you to Force of Vigor. Alright, so... Back here for the third and final round against Amulet Titan. Uh, this hand is not close to good enough. Uh, this hand is not either. Well, another five lander, a five five card hand. Uh, we're going to be going to opponents mulligan to six, but dare I say they mulligan better than we do? Uh, wow! <laughs> Holy cow! Um, I think we keep it and hope to draw horror. Feels so bad getting rid of two daybreaks there. Far out. I could have got rid of the boggle instead, but then if he's got an amulet hand, core spirit dance is just gonna die always. So here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Amulet Titan is playing main deck Relic to hate on Loris. Um, you've seen it here first. Let's get in for that one dirty point of damage. Excuse me. Ooh. And yeah, if we draw an aura next turn, we're looking really good. If we don't... Uh, the game will probably spiral out of control very quickly. <laughs> well, that's that's all we ever asked for was auras, right? Auras and land when we're light, but uh, <laughs> today's not that day. Let's get this life gain happening. Uh, I don't know, maybe not. Let's let's draw an extra card. It's better if he's got the Rex Sage in hand. Just a Dryad's not going to be good enough. Um, because we do have Lethal uh, once we cast this Daybreak. And his next turn is him paying for Summoner's Pact. So. Uh, might want to play around Force of Vigor a little bit here as well. If we get an extra aura, we want to cast it just in case. Alright, so we get a nice win there against Amulet Titan. Uh, feel like that was... Like I'm one game short, like I didn't add it last game. So we got a win last game, and I don't think I... Maybe I've lost a game somewhere, I'm not sure, because I did 14, yeah I did 14 divided by 23 last time, so we're up to 15 now, 15 by 24, yeah cool. 
So 62.5, which is technically around 63. Rounding it as to the finest of margins. Lost the die roll here. Um, doesn't look like my opponent. Okay, he does have a companion. He just did that really quickly. Uh, yeah, look, I'll go ahead and keep this. This looks pretty decent. Titan decks, that's uh, two for O during this set of matches. Yikes, looks like our opponent's on burn. And uh, Savage Swipe on top of our library, not quite what we're looking for. We are going to have to take the damage here to get a turn one creature down. Uh, but we can potentially eat a creature for free with Hyena Umbra plus Savage Swipe as long as we draw land. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have Eidolon, because I don't think we're very well placed to beat Eidolon at this stage. Because then I'd probably have to Hyena Umbra, Savage Swipe the Eidolon, take 4 damage to do that, and then block the Goblin Guide when it attacks me. Pretty rough, if that's going to be what's happening. Well, I know what line I'm doing. Uh, of course, Spirit Dance is going to be uh, pretty not good here. Uh, let's take two damage and enter blocking mode. <clears throat> if he attacks with Goblin Guide, we draw land off of the Guide Trigger and then Daybreak Corona off top. We probably still win, but... I think we're in a lot of trouble if that exactly does not happen. Ethereal Armor on top, so I'm going to go ahead and block the Eidolon here. He's probably got um, Boros Charm, going to give Indestructible, and then I'm just going to concede. Alright. Well, I wasn't beating that, and, you know, I, I didn't have a line to actually win that game then. Uh, Alright. So we like these guys. We don't like our suppression fields. We don't like our core. We do like our daybreak, so that can come back in. Uh, definitely accidentally clicked on that just then. Um, <laughs> and Keen Sense is probably a little bit weak against this deck. Do 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 do. Unfortunately, we're going to be switched off of Lurus this game, but whatever. <laughs> I don't think we need Lurus at the moment. I think we're good. Opponent's taking a lot longer to sideboard than what we did, but I'm pretty well versed in this matchup, and maybe they haven't come up against it very much. Alright, so we'll be on the play. And, hey, look, we got a Leyline Hand. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm going to go ahead and keep. Looks like my opponent's also kept the 7. Alright, Swift Spear is not the scariest creature in the world. Not yet, at least. Um, I really like to see Ethereal Armor, Rancor, Daybreak, one of those sorts of cards. Let's me end the game a little bit quicker here. Alright, Rancor. Asking you shall receive. Go ahead and cast this Hyena Umbra before he resolves an Eidolon. Something like Sentinel's Eyes to give me that Vigilance would also be really nice at this stage. Alright, so just another Swift Spear. Uh, and a Lava Spike on himself. I'm always happy when my opponent Lava Spikes themselves. Another Rancor, okay. So attack for 6, and next turn we can cast the Grispoon, fly through the air and kill him. Uh, 
<laughs> so yeah, not not as hard to race burn when you've got leyline out. <laughs> They do, they do have wear tears and uh, disenchants and stuff for it, and destructive revelry and that enchantment which activates for one, all of that sort of stuff. But um, yep, all right. So that was good enough. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and submit the same list. I think. Mm. I might just remove these cores, put in the keen sense uh, for a force of vigor target. Especially like on the draw, we're so much like less likely to ever cast Core Spirit Dancer for any mode ever. <clears throat> uh, look, it's not amazing, but I think it's a keep. Takes so much damage from our land base is my main concern, and if we don't draw auras, we're looking really bad. At, I think Mulligan. That's a really close one. Um, this one I'm happy with, and I'm thinking bottom the Horizon Canopy. If we can get a turn one creature from our opponent. Oh wait, he's on the play this time. Uh, even if we get idle on with it, I'm going to be pretty happy. Uh, pains me so much shocking here. I really don't like doing that. If I could slow roll it, I would. It's already at 14. Uh, game on. We just gave our opponent a free burn spell by doing that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why he's bringing that in against me. Maybe the next level, the ley line. So when he targets himself. <laughs> I'm pretty happy doing that, to be honest. Another one. Alright, opponent. Goblin guide. Alright, you gain a life. Good on you. <laughs> Oh, Ethereal Armor, excellent. Uh, let's hold off a turn here. And double block. Next turn we can cast two auras and attack for a lot more. And by double block, I mean block one on each, but or just stop them from attacking for a turn, whatever it might be. Opponent's got one card in hand now. Attack for seven. Leave back a chump blocker, maybe two with the uh, dry dubber. Attack for seven. All right, let's do it. But it's only got one card in hand. Like they're uh, running out of time here. All right, lightning helix is gonna gain them some life, deal us some damage. But again, one card here. Uh, he might have to cast Lurus soon. Yeah, I think these uh, cool firewalkers were a terrible call from our opponent. <laughs> so, so, so silly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and he didn't even have the goblin guide in hand. He drew into the goblin guide. 
or else he would have cast it on turn one. He did nothing on turn one, but lightning bolt me an end step. <laughs> Two core firewalkers land lightning bolt. It doesn't sound like a keep to me if I'm a burn player. Not unless I'm in the burn mirror. <clears throat> Swift Spear, okay. Now we're cooking. He's taken... Oh, he's gained a life, sorry. Made a similar noise to when Eidolon does its thing. Alright. Ready when you are, opponent. Alright, what's on top of my library? That's what I want to know first. Rancor. So add Rancor, we have an attack for 10. Uh, we can't kill with the Boggle there. Do we want to fetch for Dry Darby here? Potentially. It's just draw one card off the top of his library. If it's a Lightning Bolt and he's pointing it at Dry Darby instead of at our face, I'm fine. If it's Searing Blaze exactly, then that sucks, but you know. Let's go ahead and take two damage there. Uh, we eat the core firewalker, which is nice. We're feeling like it's probably land that's left in his hand. Okay, it is. He's shocked. Casting Luris, gotcha. So if I put this on the Slippery Boggle, my Glade Cover Scout goes up to an 8-8, eight, eight, and my Slippery Boggle is, oh sorry, an 8-6, or 8-7, sorry. Plus 4 on the Boggle is 12 damage. That's not enough to kill our opponent. Do I need to leave up double blocks here? I think I do. I block the scout. So I'm like one damage off killing here. Um... If I block the Swiss Spear, I take five damage there plus a burn spell. No, I have to. I have to hold up. This is so awkward. <sighs> He's gonna start getting his core Firewalkers back from his graveyard. <sighs> All right. He's leading on that, which means he might not have drawn a burn spell. Surely he'd be looking to do that post combat. Oh, yikes. Yikes. Holy cow. How do I win now? He's just got six damage to go wide. We just... Any aura. Any aura. Come on, man. Can I actually win? If I leave back my blockers, I block one, I block two, I take five, and if he draws nothing, 
He has to draw nothing, and we need to leave Swiss Spear unblocked. He's recasting Core Firewalker here. We might be good. Uh, he might have a burn spell as well, though. Boggle on top. Another Boggle. Um, Alright, so let's block... Take five, hope for no burn spell. Damn, drawing like creature two times. Why are you even slow rolling? Why are you even slow rolling? What is the point? Oh man. So bad on the draws there. I don't. I don't even think my um, I don't think my opponent sideboarded correctly at all, um, and just like I had to mold a five there, and he just drew significantly better than me. Oh, that's so frustrating, so so frustrating. Um, so that's a loss against regular Lurus Burn. Um, so puts us back to sixty percent, includes the video. Um, so three two for the league. Um, with the list, uh, as you saw it uh, at the start, I don't think I really want to make any changes at this current point in time. Um, if I do, it's either Suppression Field or Savage Swipe or Keen Sense. Like, those are the flex slots at the moment. Uh, but yeah, thanks as always for watching and your support. Please let me know down, what you think down below, uh, if you enjoyed it or not. Um, and yeah, other than that, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.